Friends, it is time for us to pray. And how we do it here at Atlanta First is however you feel comfortable, uh, first of all. But know that one of the ways that you can feel comfortable is to come to our uh, kneeling rail and to lay your burdens down before God. Our kneeling rail is always open, uh, and you are more than welcome to do that at this time or to find a comfortable position for you, however that is, whether you bow your head or lift hands or whatever it is that the Spirit leads you to do, let's do it together at this time as we go to God in prayer. Pentecost, Lord, we hear the call of your Holy Spirit, a rushing wind. Sometimes it shakes us to our core, and we're grateful for those times, Lord, because sometimes we need to be shook. Sometimes we need a clear wake-up call from your Holy Spirit. And I think one of those times is upon us right now in this country, Lord. Oof. In this world, Lord. When we see violence all over our newspapers, all over our TVs, all over these streets, even in our homes, Lord. Oh, Lord, shake us up. Send your spirit to be with us, to be people of peace, not people of violence. 
a people who know your will toward shalom, wholeness, and real peace, a peace where justice is ever present. Because we know peace cannot happen without justice. So help us, Lord, to be agents of your peace and your justice in this city, in Atlanta, where justice seems to escape so many, including our friends and our neighbors who live on the streets, Lord. Be with our friends at the front door. Be with us as we meet needs as this church as your holy church called to love our God and our neighbor better. Help us to do it, Lord. We lift up our shut-ins, the staff of Atlanta First, the staffs of Atlanta First and Big Bethel, Lord. We lift up the ministries of each church that is represented here that they might live into your will, that they might do the things that you would have us to do, that we together might be the hands and feet of Jesus Christ that the world so desperately needs. We lift up this morning those from our own communities, here the Adams and Williams family, Maddie Brock, Rosa Freeman, Bonnie Lane, Laura Meadows, Reverend Ed and Ann Nelson, Steve Pearson, Wayne Pierce, Charles Rice, Ruth and Jim Richardson, Tommy, Thomas Steens, Betty Ann Tolbert, and Cornelia Whitty. Lord, be with each of these. Bring them to wholeness. Give them a peace that passes all understanding and heal where there is healing needed. Lord, we lift up Israel and Palestine. And we are grateful that Gaza is getting aid now. But Lord, they are war-torn. They are feeling pain. They are hungry. They are without shelter and clothing, God. And we know that we have those here as well. So then help us, God, uh, to be a people that helps. I don't know exactly how. None of us know the answers for peace in the Middle East. But some of us, all of us here, I think, by the power of your Holy Spirit, have discerned that being a help is important. And so help us to act in ways that are helpful. Guide us and direct us and our hands and our feet and our wallets toward those ends of help. Lord, as we, uh, some of us sat in a, bre uh, a, a lunch from our mayor this, uh, this last week, an interfaith lunch, we were reminded that there are more than one conflict going on in this world. There, there are 10 major conflicts or wars happening in this world right now. And so we ask that you would bring your peace where we have failed. And oh God, we have failed. God, I pray this morning that your church might be one one in ministry for all the world, that we might have a spirit of cooperation, the spirit of Pentecost, when you brought together all different kinds of people from all different areas of the world with all different languages, and you made sure that everyone could understand that God was doing a new thing that God was creating something new, a church, a church that could love and, oh, to do the work of Jesus. It's overwhelming, God. This vision that you put before us, and we have failed so many times to be that church. 
oh, but there are times when we do get it right, God, by your help, by your grace. And we would ask for more of those times going forward. That through your grace, we might work together to build your kingdom the way you would have it. Where all nations, all languages, all races, everyone would know your love, your care, your presence, and your spirit. Through this spirit, I pray the prayer that you taught us in Spanish this morning, as we ourselves pray that prayer, the Lord's Prayer, in our own language that we have learned from birth. Padre nuestro, que estás en el cielo, santificado sea tu nombre, venga tu reino, hágase tu voluntad, en la tierra como en el cielo. Danos hoy nuestro pan de cada día, perdona nuestras ofensas, como también nosotros perdonamos a los que nos ofenden. No nos dejes caer en tentación y líbranos de mal, porque tuyo es el reino, tuyo es el poder y tuya es la gloria, ahora y por siempre. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I got caught up in the, in the moment um, and did not tell you that there are multiple ways to give to this church. And thank you for those who put something in the offering plate. Uh, that is one of the ways to give. Uh, another way is uh, through Cash App. We also have online giving through our website, atlantafirstumc slash give. Uh, you can text the give and uh, any special gifts can go to our church office, finance office. Thank you for being faithful every time that you give to this church, whether it's through song or whether it's through uh, your offerings and tithes, uh, God's tithes, or whether it's uh, through your presence, your prayers, your service, or your witness. There are ways that you are meeting the needs of those around us. You make sure people get fed. You make sure people get clothed. You make sure that people know that they are loved by God. Yeah, yeah. And thank you for the ways that you serve this church in whatever ways you give back to God through this church. We are grateful.
I wanted to introduce to you all the Reverend Dr. John Foster. He is the senior pastor at the historic Big Bethel African Methodist Episcopal Church here in Atlanta, Georgia. You have seen it from the highway, I promise. Dr. Foster has a distinguished career both as a clergy in the AME Church and as an educator at several colleges and universities. He has served as pastor in the 2nd, 10th, and 6th AME Episcopal Districts. And during his tenure as a pastor, Dr. Foster has held the positions as Dean of the Board of Examiners, Conference Trustee Board Member, Episcopal District Accountant, Technology Officer and Chief Statistician. So he has talents and gifts of the Spirit. He has served as pastor of the following AME churches, St. Stephen's in Mount Gilead, North Carolina, Williams Chapel in Hempstead, Texas, Hope in Prairie View, Texas, Pleasant Hill here in Atlanta, Rock Temple in Conyers, St. Philip in Savannah, Allen Temple here in Atlanta, and finally Big Bethel here in Atlanta. Dr. Foster is married to Sister Mary Ann Foster. They are the proud parents of Christina Foster Richmond, John Foster Jr., and Jessica Rose Foster. And they have one granddaughter, Zoe Elise Richmond. I know they're proud. Dr. Foster is a native of Cincinnati, Ohio, and you can find uh, his full biography at the link provided in our worship guide. We extend a hearty welcome to you, Dr. Foster, and await God's word this morning. All right. Oh, that's better. Praise God. Oh, let's. All right, and we lift up the name of technology. Uh, name. <laughs> See, that was that was bound to happen, right? We 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 lift up the name of Jesus as God is in the blessing business, and we lift up the name of Jesus that God has brought us to this place uh, of worship uh, that we can lift up the name of Jesus, and we praise God from whom all blessings flow. Uh, we, we thank you here at Atlanta First uh, for allowing us the opportunity to come to proclaim that Jesus is still King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Let the people of God say amen. Uh, and we praise God uh, that God is blessing us and keeping us uh, as we lift up the name of Jesus that, that uh, we, we are here on this special Sunday, this day of Pentecost celebration, this day of lifting up the name of Jesus. Uh, I'd like to thank God for the hospitality uh, that you all have shown us from even the coming in uh, this morning. Uh, we had a very nice gentleman uh, outside. I, I, might, I may mess up his name, but I think his name was Paul. Is that right? Robert, thank you. Let's give the Lord a hand praise for Robert, amen. Okay. I, I, I praise God for uh, Miss Mary, who was able to take such good care of us. Let's get a little hand praise. All right. Uh, we, we praise God for, brother, for uh, Pastor Chris. Let's get a little hand praise. And, uh, and Chris came with red shoes today uh, in honor of uh, Pentecost, but also in honor of his, his young, young child, whose name is Jordan. Let the church say amen. amen. We praise God for our worship team. Let's get a little hand praise. And, uh, and, and you couldn't have picked a better song. I'm going to be selfish for a moment. Uh, Richard Smallwood is one of my favorite artists. And uh, when you sang that song, it's just near and dear to my heart. So we just praise the Lord. Amen. All right, and, and we just lift up every, each and every one of you uh, that we praise God from whom all blessings flow. Uh, now, um, I want to give just one or two sentences before we get into the word about how we got to where we're at today. It, it's, it's Pastor Smothers uh, has a lot of engagements around the city, 
and certainly outside the city, but one of her ecumenical engagements is with the mayor and city of Atlanta. I also go to a lot of activities with the mayor and the city of Atlanta. And we were at one of those meetings and we, we kept kind of staring and looking at each other and, and said, uh, could we have lunch uh, somewhere down the line? So the folk, uh, my folk and her folk got together and, and we had lunch and, and, uh, and uh, we started sharing our church history and uh, she said that, you know, we were founded in 1847. And I said, you know, that's interesting. We were founded in 1847. And uh, she said, well, we were uh, the first Methodist church uh, here in town. I said, oh, that's interesting, is that we were part of the first Methodist church here in town. And we start comparing notes. And I saw that, that uh, we, were, we were together. Uh, we come from each other. And so we praise God. Now, now, if you read your history, and I want to do like what Brother Chris said, is uh, on, on, on this side of your sheet is, is the Atlanta First version of the early history, of which you call yourself Wesley Chapel. And, 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 and that's fine. But, but, but I just want to let you know on our history, which is the other side, turn to your neighbor and say the other side. All right, then, then, then we call the church a Union a Methodist Church. It's the same church, but, but you know, history is according to who wrote the history, are you with me? And so, and so same church, but, but, but we called it Union. Uh, 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 and, and, and so the early history part, which is just a page on each side, really shows us how we got our early beginning. And so we praise God for that because uh, back then, then Wesley Chapel or Union, whatever you call it, was gracious enough to say, let's bring together uh, both white congregants and colored slave congregants uh, to hold a congregation together, uh, which ultimately uh, broke apart in about eight or nine years to, to have us go to become what was called Bethel Tabernacle. That, that's in both our histories. Let the church say amen. amen. And so, and so we, we, we came from the same place. Turn to your neighbor and say same place. And so, and so we praise God that God brought us. So it makes all the sense in the world that, that the Pastor Smothers and Pastor Foster would get together and say, hey, 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 let's get together and, and, and do this change of pulpit uh, uh, so that we can celebrate uh, the fact that we came from the same place. is God has had us on much different paths, but we celebrate that God has brought us uh, to this point. Let the people of God say amen. amen. All right, so, so we thank everyone who took part in getting us together. Uh, uh, one last thing, because I have to ride home, is I want to recognize my wife, Sister Marianne. Wave at us, Sister Marianne. <laughs> and, and, and Brother Bill Sis, who goes everywhere we go, uh, he's the pastor steward. Let's get a, a Lord a hand praise for him. All, all, all right, that's, that's everything. Uh, let's turn to our scripture. We're going to go to Acts, the second chapter, and start at the eighth verse. I'm sorry if you're following along with me. I'm going to jump all the way to the eighth verse and read the eighth through the twelfth verse. So Acts, the second chapter, beginning at the eighth verse, and we'll read the eighth through the twelfth verse. All right, hear, hear, hear the word of the Lord. Uh, and how is it that we hear each in our own language in which we were born? Uh, Parthians and Medes and Elamites, those dwelling in Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Pergia, Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya adjoining Cyrene, visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs, we hear them speaking in our own tongues as wonderful works of God. Uh, verse 12 says, uh, so they were all amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what could this mean? And I want to just reread verse 12, uh, because that's kind of where I'm going to focus at uh, as we lift up uh, this text and lift up this celebration of Pentecost Sunday. So they were all amazed and perplexed and saying to one another, uh, what could this mean? Turn to your neighbor and say, what could this mean? All right, if it, if, it, if it be the Lord's will for just a moment, 
uh, we're going to preach on the subject, uh, a new thing. Turn to your neighbor and say, a new thing. Let us bow our head in a word of prayer. Most Heavenly Father, we thank and praise you and lift up your name. Lord, you have brought us to this celebration of Pentecost Sunday. Lord, we ask that you bless us and mold us and make us uh, so that we can leave this place saying that 2,000 years ago you did a new thing and it's carrying on through the centuries, through the, through the eons for us today. Help us to have that spirit of doing a new thing. Uh, that we can reach out and touch somebody in the name of Jesus. Now let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable on thy side. Oh Lord, my rock and my redeemer, let the people of God say amen, amen, amen. A new thing. Uh, on, on that day of Pentecost, in the second chapter of uh, the book of Acts, then something, something happened. Uh, it, it began with the 120 in the upper room. Uh, it began where it said they were praying and having devotion and was in one accord in one place. Uh, but, but, but something happened. Now, we didn't read all the text, but you just have to trust me with this. Uh, the text say first there was a mighty wind uh, and then clothing tongues of fire went on each one of them. And, and then the text said they all began to speak in other in other languages uh, so, that, so that the end result was that, that everybody received the good news uh, testimony in their own language. In other words, you know, you can look and you can say, well, let, let's, try to, let's, let's try to make a diagnostic on the mighty wind. Let's try to make a diagnostic on the clothing and tongue of fire. Uh, uh, let's, let's, let, let's try to understand what that means speaking in other tongues but, but, but let me go to the end for just a moment and the end was that, that everybody who was there uh, was able to receive uh, the good news turn to your neighbor and say the good news uh, they, they were able to receive the good news in their own language now, now, now Pentecost is the culmination of this, this festival uh, that goes from Passover to ultimately festival weeks. So it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a travel time uh, for, 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 for the Jewish people. It's a bunch of folk from all over uh, were there. But on the day of Pentecost, it says that, that, that God did something through the Holy Spirit, as, as, uh, as Pastor Chris says, on the birthday of the church, that God did something, that he sent the Spirit uh, so, that, so that the end result was that everybody there heard the Spirit of God in their own language. It, it's everybody there heard. They didn't have to wonder about it. They didn't have to say, I don't speak Hebrew very well. I don't speak Greek very well. I don't speak these languages. But, 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 but everybody heard uh, it in their own language. And, and, and so, so as, this, as the old... Old agreement ended, the Old Testament ended. It, it ended when Christ died on the cross. It, it, it ended when Christ said, it is finished, and, and, he, and he gave up the ghost. It ended when, when he said, into thy hands I, I commend my spirit. Then this, this new relationship started where the day of Pentecost came, and it was, it was this thing called the new thing. And the result of this new thing is, is that everybody's able to hear uh, the good news in their own in their own language, and so and so and and, and 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 so my central message to you today is 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 that God is saying something here. It, it, God has sent a wind before. He's he sent an earthquake. He sent these other things. But God is saying on the day of Pentecost is 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 that the good news is now for everybody. It, 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 it is no longer that you have to be part of the nation of Israel. No longer do you have to be Abraham's child. No longer do you have to be of this bloodline. But now the good news is now for everybody. Uh, in, in the old agreement, then God, God, was, God, God, God had a special people. Uh, you might even say he was a little bit discriminatory. That's another sermon. Amen. Okay, but, but in the new agreement, turn to your neighbor and say the new agreement, then, then, then it says I, that it shall come to pass in the latter days that I will pour out my spirit on, on all flesh. Uh, that is God is saying that I'm going to do a new thing to pour out. It, is that, is there, 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 there was, yeah, that, that God is saying that I'm going to do this new thing to pour out to everybody. 
is no longer going to be to this set or to that set or to that set, but I'm going to pour out my spirit to everyone. Now, 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 there, 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 there was a time in the Bible uh, that God used tongues to separate or to divide us. Uh, for our Sunday school members, I want to just take a brief detour, go to Genesis 11 uh, and the story of the Tower of Babel, where God said is that, is that the people become strong. And so I'm going to use these different tongues so that it will confuse them. And that's why it's called the Tower of Babel. And so the people got different tongues and they, start, uh, they started to build this tower to God, but God used the different tongues to confuse them and they went off and, and that was the origin of these different tongues that God used. But, but, but God reversed that story in Acts 2 that he says that a new thing I have, I'm going to use the gospel to spread it from Jerusalem to now to everyone. God is saying by human nature that we want to be comfortable with who we are. We want to be comfortable with our own little cliques. We want to be comfortable with our own little kind. Uh, but, but, but God is saying from this point forward, then that's not good enough anymore. Then I'm going to spread the gospel to, to everyone. Well, well who, who are you going to spread it to, Pastor? I'm going to spread it to the Cretes, to the Parthians. I'm going to spread it to the Ethiopians. I'm going to spread it to those in Rome. I'm going to spread it to those around. I'm going to spread it to any and everyone. But God is coming in and saying that by human nature, I know that you want to be comfortable with your own kind. Oh, turn to your neighbor and say, I got a click, amen. It is, is I feel comfortable with that click. I feel okay with that click. But God is saying that's not good enough anymore is I'm going to spread the gospel out to everyone. I'm going to spread it to all people, to all, all nations. It is Pastor Foster has been at Big Bethel now for 11 years, and, uh, and I've been to plenty of meetings. They talk about the homeless. Uh, 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 and so, so I was shocked. Uh, we have something called the Auburn Church Collaborative. Uh, it's a collection of churches that are right on Auburn and Edgewood. And so, so I was shocked. Uh, Pastor Chris, it is the first, the first meeting I went to, they were talking about the homeless and some of the business owners came in and they said, they said, you know, we got a problem with these homeless. And I said, well, okay, uh, can you tell us about the problem? Well, they sit in front of our stores and they disturb people and they, and they cause people who want to come to our stores to, you know, can, you, can you all stop helping them? I said, well, what are you talking about? If, if you stop helping them, they'll go away. If you stop feeding them, they'll stop coming around. If you stop doing these things, then, and, 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 and so I looked at them and I said, I, I, I said, that's why we're here, is we're here to help those who are outside of our comfort zone. We're here to help those who need help. We're here to help the ones that we're uncomfortable with. It is, we're here to help those who are outside of our line of influence. God has sent the day of Pentecost to say that the gospel is for everybody. But you know, by human nature, then those apostles said, well, Lord, as we see this miraculous thing to happen this day, and, you know, the text say a little bit later on, 3,000 souls were saved that day. I mean, wouldn't you be amazed if you grew from 120 to 3,000 in one day? Wouldn't you be amazed? But even with all that miracle, then these apostles said, okay, well, we'll leave that other stuff going to the outside world to someone else. And so they sat on it. They sat on the good news of the gospel. They said the gospel is for Jerusalem. The gospel is for us as Jews. They sat on it. But, you know, God has a way. In other words, he has a sense of humor. So, so, so a few years later, God, God sent the Romans in to destroy the whole city. In other words, we get comfortable with our own nest of how we want to be. God will tear this place down so that you and I will go out into the highways and the byways. So by 70 A.D., then Jerusalem was no more. By 70 A.D., all these people who stayed in Jerusalem because it was their comfort zone were now put out to the whole world to preach the gospel. Let me go through that very quickly. Simon Peter made it all the way to Rome where he was crucified. Andrew went to Greece and Italy. James, the brother of John, went to northern Spain. John, the beloved, died in Ephesus. James the less was went to death in an angry crowd in 62. 
Philip the, uh, went to Ethiopia, Bartholomew went to India, Thomas went to Turkey, now and then later India, Matthew the tax collector went to Ethiopia, Simon and Jude uh, went and converted 60,000 people in Babylon, which is now Iraq and Iran. Matthias, the 12th apostle, who they chose later, was associated with Armenia and went to the Black Sea to Russia. In other words, all these saints who were saying, Lord, we want to stay in our comfort zone, then because they had the season of Pentecost on them, then God said, go out into the highways and the byways. Go out into the other places that people haven't heard about Jesus the Christ and go tell somebody about Jesus. Church, I'm here today to tell you that the real message about, about Pentecost is that we get out of our comfort zone and we go and tell somebody that we're not comfortable with, but you tell them about Jesus. You tell them about the author and the finisher of our faith. So that day of Pentecost had the descent of the Holy Spirit. They came down with a mighty wind. They came down with clothing tongues of fire. They came down and said, I'm here to do a new thing. And that new thing is to get us out of what we're comfortable with. But he says that I'm coming and I'm coming now to make the gospel free for everyone. That same day, there was an empowerment of witnessing. The tongues just weren't for a show. The tongues just weren't for people to segregate themselves and say, I speak in tongues and you don't speak in tongues. But the, song, the tongues were used to go and prophesy and go and tell somebody about Jesus. Jesus didn't use that miracle just so we can stand on ourselves and say that I can speak in tongues and you can't speak in tongues. But Jesus used that miracle to say I'm going to have the, the gift of salvation go out into the whole world. And then the final blessing of that day of Pentecost is a power in diversity. Turn to your neighbor and say diversity. Again, church, as we get comfortable in being with ourselves, even in church, you know, I don't know if it's true here at Atlanta first, maybe y'all holier than us at Big Bethel, but when we get a visitor, we size them up, don't we? We say, are they church folk or are they not church folk? And if they're not church folk, we make them sit over. You can't sit too close to me because you don't look like you in nobody's church. And, we, and we, start to, we start to segregate. But church, I'm here today to tell you that part of our biggest miracle, our biggest blessing is taking on people who maybe didn't fit the mold, maybe didn't fit the whole thing of who we think fits in our, in our, in our nature. Let me, let me get a little bit esoteric, but I'm about to finish up, I promise you. Is the United States of America, what was this great experiment? Now, you think that it's this great experiment because we had democracy, that we had the Boston Tea Party, that we had the man riding on the horse saying that the British are coming. I ain't talking about that part of the experiment. I'm talking about the experiment where God took some folk from England and France and Spain and, and brought them over here, that God took some folk from Africa, uh, ultimately becoming four million of us and put us together. That God took some folk from, 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 from Florida and from, and from Georgia, and, 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 and we went through 150 years of genocide when we put them off on the trail of tears, but God put us together. That God took some folk all the way from Asia to come to the West Coast. That God was able to take Spaniards and French and Indians and Asians and put us together. America is this great experiment because he was able to bring a whole lot of folk together so that we would become a pot of folk with different backgrounds and different ethnicities and different races. But God said, I'm going to bless this group because you come from different backgrounds and you come from different places, but your blessing is going to be like the psalm writer said, when all of God's children get together, then what a time, what a time, what a time 
what we try to do is suppress the ethnicity and, the, and, and suppress the background. But when we suppress the American Indian, then we forget about the difference of the environment and our relationship with God's environment. We suppress the nature and the God that we serve is related to all. In, in every group, there's a blessing that we can get. And I'm here today to tell you that the day of Pentecost celebrated. Turn to your neighbor and say celebrate the diversity of God's kingdom so that we can come here on earth as it is in heaven. So as I close, I say that God is able to do a new thing. Touch your neighbor and say a new thing. He says, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. God is able to do a new thing. Touch your neighbor and say a new thing. But ye shall receive power after the Holy Spirit has come, and ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem, watch this now, in Judea, in Samaria, and the uttermost parts of the earth, Jesus is prophesying. God is able to do a new thing. Touch your neighbor and say a new thing. And when that day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all together in one place, but God was using that one place so that he can spread out the good news into the kingdom. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. God is here to do a new thing for all people. On this day of Pentecost, God is able to spread his spirit out so that you and I can be a blessing to all people. Let the people of God say amen, amen, amen. Come on, Brother Chris. Friends, uh, the invitation is yours. If you are ready for God to do a new thing in your life, if you've been waiting for a new thing, if you're tired of the old thing and you've been waiting on something new to get your life on track, to get uh, out of the mess, to start a new journey with God, the invitation is yours contact uh, Pastor Jasmine or me at the church. We'd love to have that conversation with you about how to become a better disciple of Jesus Christ uh, and, and to live into the new thing that God is starting to do and has been doing uh, here in the city of Atlanta and beyond. And now, if you will rise in body or in spirit, uh, Dr. Foster is going to bless us with the benediction. Let us receive the benediction. In Christ, we are a new creation. Old things have passed away. All things become new, a new thing. And now, may the grace of our Lord Jesus the Christ, the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, rest and rule and abide. Now, henceforth and forevermore, let the people of God say, Amen, amen, amen.
Amen. Go in peace.